10 years i think we will be in much better place in terms of how we understand aging and how we can treat it and how we can extend human longevity uh, beyond the years look at what we've been able to do um, in last 10 15 years 20 years the vaccines and how uh, they have improved you know the quality of life and the longevity longevity of it um, a 50 year old man today you know is much more healthier much more productive than he was like a few decades ago so if we if we keep going that route like if you follow that like trajectory i think we could easily extend our lifespan within my lifespan to maybe 10 20 maybe 30 years um, more than what, what we're doing now so and then sky's the limit you know science we really never stop reading as scientists thank you for joining change i am possible which is india's first future tech meets sustainability podcast and today i'm delighted and honored to have with me Dr. Amit Sharma, who is the group lead at Sense Research Foundation in the Senescence Immunology Research Group. So, Dr. Really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast. So, why don't we start with like a brief introduction and background? Uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, it's a great opportunity. I'm, I'm glad to be talking to you and through you, your audience. Um, I grew up in India and did all my initial education in India. And uh, after doing my PhD from um, uh, IGIV in Delhi, um, where we were looking into the role of microRNAs in uh, regulation of cytokines and, and uh, how they impact um, inflammation and uh, asthma in mice. I got interested in this gene regulatory pathways and I did my first postdoc um, at Stanford University School of Medicine. Uh, there I worked a little bit on understanding the reprogramming of uh, fibroblasts into iPS cells, uh, induced pluripotent stem cells. And um, one thing that was interesting to me was that when I was trying to reprogram uh, cells from a 70-year-old person, um, they, they were somehow harder to reprogram than cells that were uh, from a younger person. So we figured out that there were epigenetic uh, changes that were affecting the reprogramming efficiency. And that really got me interested in understanding the biology of aging. So I looked up to find out where we can do that kind of work. Um, and I joined Buck Research uh, uh, Institute at the time um, called, and now it's called Buck Institute. And there we started working on um, how, how cells respond to DNA damage and how that contributes to aging. And we got into biology of aging and cellular senescence. And uh, uh, while doing this project, um, we understood that actually senescent cells affect the environment quite a bit, you know, their neighboring environment and contribute to aging. So when I started working at uh, Sense Research Foundation, I was able to marry my basic immunology training and my full focus on senescence and combine them two together and started working here. You know, what are the main causes of aging? You know, could you kind of like break that down, you know, maybe like the hallmarks of aging? The way we understand aging uh, now is that it is a series of damages that occur in our body. Um, and our inability to repair those damages is what eventually causes uh, an organism to grow old. Um, for instance, we, we start accumulating DNA damage, which happens as a natural process. So it doesn't necessarily uh, come from the outside. The cell, in order to replicate its own DNA, starts incorporating damage. Most of the damage should be corrected, gets corrected. But if it doesn't, then they start accumulating slowly. Then the cells start losing the telomeres, the ends that protect the chromosome every time a cell divides. And at some point in time, it becomes so short that it cannot be repaired anymore. Um, well, telomere doesn't really get repaired in adult cells anyway, but it gets to a point where the cell cannot divide anymore, cannot replicate anymore. And either it has to make a choice from becoming a cancer cell or uh, a choice from dying. And, and in some cases, it chooses to become an asset. Um, and, and remain there uh, and kind of loses its functionality. Uh, how that choice is made is something we are still trying to understand. In addition to that, uh, dysfunctional lysosomes, the, the, or, the organelle within the cell that is mainly responsible for processing of damaged proteins, uh, that becomes non-functional and we start accumulating damaged protein in the cell. Uh, that contributes to, to aging. Um, 
and um, accumulation of cross-linked proteins. You know, the proteins in order to function have to be trans translated and, and then modified. And that modification sometimes uh, goes disarray. Uh, and then these cross-linked proteins start accumulating in the cell. So a combination of this and many of these damages uh, eventually lead to slow decline in function of organ and, and then body and then start aging. So, I mean, you said, you know, there are these various reasons which leads to aging. So are there, you know, methods or approaches at this point in time, which has come to a point where we can say that, okay, these are the approaches which are either maybe can slow, stop or reverse age? Mm -hmm. Up until a few years ago, um, we scientists were not very eager to talk about aging as a disease. We were not really talking about aging in terms of molecular changes that were happening. But since then, we moved, moved quite a bit in that field, um, in that direction. So uh, having said that, we're still in very early stages of this, like um, of, of actually finding a pill. You know? um, now, in terms of other things which are like at the horizon and coming hopefully very, very soon, uh, is now we're trying we, there are various uh, companies now who have started uh, testing drugs that, that can specifically kill senescent cells. So from everything we've done in animal models, we know that removal of senescent cells start building up in the body as we grow up. And if you remove them, we see benefits of it. So those kinds of uh, therapeutic approaches are, are, are becoming uh, going to be available uh, hopefully soon. And I think the way it would work is eventually, initially it will come in as a treatment for some diseases where we know senescent cells is a problem. Um, and then eventually, eventually down the line, it will become like a, a prophylactic treatment for people um, to put a, possibly slow down or delay aging altogether. Could you talk about those companies who are working on these analytic uh, uh, drugs or treatment? And, and, and for, for the listeners who don't really know or understand what senescent cell is, maybe you, you could mm -hmm. start with that. And maybe also talk about interaction between uh, senescent cells and na uh, natural killer cells, your approach. Right. Senescent cells are essentially a cell in our body, which is thermally differentiated, meaning that it has attained the phenotype it has to attain, like a skin cell, for instance, or uh, a muscle cell or a hepatocyte, but they still have the ability to divide. So, so if say a signal comes in, a damage has happened, uh, an injury has happened, that this cell can divide and repair the damage. But in some um, erroneous circumstances, like uh, a cell has accumulated enough DNA damage or other kinds of damages that we were talking about, the cell uh, decides um, at, at the time when it's replicating its DNA, whether it will undergo the division or not. And if the signaling within the cell recognizes P53, one of the transcription factors, which is also called the guardian of the genome, recognizes enough damage in the cell, then it stops the cell and it arrests at a certain stage. In a normal course of event, this cell will start producing inflammatory factors uh, these inflammatory factors are, are mostly involved in attracting the, immu uh, the immune cells to the site, uh, most notably natural killer cells. Uh, and there is evidence of uh, macrophages. These are the main phagocytic cells. But mostly we know really well that natural killer cells are attracted to the site. Um, and they come in and they recognize these cells based on presence of these stress receptors. Um, and then they attack these cells and they kill them. So first they release enzymes that will create pores in the cell. And then they uh, use these pores to, to, to send in molecules that can uh, cause apoptosis in the cell and it should die. Going back to the original question about like companies that are working on, on developing senolytics, uh, these drugs that can kill senescent cells. So it has been figured out um, that like senescent cells have increased pro-survival pathway. So when a cell is undergoing apoptosis, it's not like a straight straight like road decision. There are multiple checkpoints at different steps where the cell can reverse the process or, or figure out how to escape that. Senescent cells, uh, like some cancer cells, have figured out a way to trick the cell and not kill itself, even though the signal is coming uh, that it should possibly die because it has accumulated damage. So the, the, the levels of those pro-survival proteins is little higher in these cells compared to normal cells in the body, um, which are also going through normal cycle uh, of cell cycle. These drugs actually potentiate those signaling uh, molecules that will signal cell to undergo apoptosis, those pro-survival pathways. 
um, and essentially block them. And then the cell, and, and then that pushes the cell over that boundary and then it, it undergoes apoptosis. Now, because these pathways are, at least in theory, not engaged in other cell types, um, we should not touch other cells. It should not have an effect on other cells, but it would kill senescent cells quite a bit. Um, so that's the idea behind synolytic drugs. And there are um, uh, Unity Biosciences, a company that came essentially from the work that, that was done in my mentor's lab. Uh, previously, um, they're one of the leaders. There are several other companies that are coming about in this. Um, immune system, like I was getting back to, um, but that's where I come into the picture, is the immune system has the ability to remove senescent cells. Now, no drug comes with no side effect, right? Exactly. Right. So what I think is if we, if we can harness the power of the immune system, which is um, how is it that NK cells and other immune cells like that can recognize senescent cells and target them um, more effectively, is what loses with aging. Well, if this process works well, then the senescent cells are, should be taken out. But something happens and this process doesn't work so well anymore. That's what uh, causes this buildup of senescent cells in our body. So we're trying to understand that process and trying to use that information to target um, um, senescent cells using our own natural uh, immunity against it. So would you like to talk a little bit more about that, you know, harnessing for the power of the immune cells? Mm -hmm. Maybe kind of explain where, where it stands at this point in the research and where do you think it would, uh, you know, lead to maybe in the next couple of years? We and others have shown that actually there are unique stress receptors that are expressed on senescent cells that can be used um, by natural killer cells to recognize them and kill them. Uh, in addition to that, uh, we've also have some data that actually there is an inherent de uh, decline in function of natural killer cells with it, some loss in signaling that causes that uh, process to happen. Um, for instance, the main receptors by which we can recognize in natural killer cells um, if we if we collect the blood of a person and and categorize the levels of 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 natural killer cells expressing those receptors, we see there is a decline. It's not the same. So one project that we've done is to show actually the decline happens, but we can reverse that process in vitro at least when we treat cells with a certain like these natural killer cells from some cytokines, um, and then we co-culture them with senescent cells. We achieve, achieve very high level of cytotoxicity towards senescent cells, and we're able to overcome that age-related decline. Now we're trying to figure out, because natural killer cells are not subject to the same um, immune checkpoints as T cells are, and they're part of innate immune system, theoretically at least, uh, we, can, we can inject my natural killer cells into yours, um, and vice versa. So the idea would be to use off-the-shelf natural killer cells and, um, and use those as, uh, for the treatment. Um, or for senescent cells. In addition to that, we're also we and others are also looking at the the surface of senescent cells. So, so we know that there are signaling pathways which are upregulated in senescent cells, and we recognize them based on those. But there is no unique marker for senescent cells. These markers can also uh, mark for other types of cells. Um, so. We think if we understand what is present on the surface, what unique receptors are present on senescent cells, we can arm natural killer cells to enhance their targeting uh, by, by a technology which is called a CAR. Uh, this is chimeric antigen receptor and has been used uh, quite successfully for treatment of, um, uh, of, can of cancer using like immunotherapy. Um, we're then modifying uh, T cells with this CAR receptor against a specific uh, receptor on on cancer cell to target them with these cells. We think we can do the same thing with uh, natural killer cells towards nascent cells. So, so that is one idea which is being being tested at least in theory and shown to, to, to hold promise. We are trying to translate that into patients. Um, that's the kind of work we're doing. There are other groups um, from UCSF who, where they've shown that actually invariant T cells also can recognize specific receptors like glycoproteins, uh, which are what they're uh, showing is unique to senescent cells, and they're trying to look into the clinical application of it. So one another notable study in that direction, I think that that is worth mentioning, is um, is some some work that is happening in uh, in University of uh, Berkeley. Uh, where they're showing that um, this is the same group that I've shown that actually blood exchange between mice um, from young mice to old mice, uh, this experiment is called parabiosis, where you 
jump joint to mice, a young and an old, you see the beneficial effect of blood transfer from young mice to old mice are quite profound. Uh, they're also showing that, well, in addition to that, actually simply diluting the blood of the mice um, also has beneficial effects um, in terms of um, reduction of senescence burden and improve, uh, improve health, mar health markers in the, in the older mice. Those data suggest that there is also something in the blood of the animal, which is over a certain age, which is, um, which is um, inhibitory to senescent cells. So there are approaches that we and others are developing where we're trying to find out what those secreted proteins are um, that are coming from senescent cells, possibly interfering with immune uh, surveillance and, and see if we can remove them and improve uh, improve the ability of the immune system to recognize senescent cells and kill them too. Which approach are you most convinced about, you know, because at this point in time, there's so many, you know, your peers who are working on age reversal and, and you know, we're looking at various things. You know, you mentioned that there's, there's, there's a team who's working on senolytic treatment. There's there's a team from Israel who's working on hyperbaric uh, oxygen chamber. Oh, yeah. yeah, you mentioned about your blood plasma transfusion uh, and stem cell therapy. That, that there's, there's various people around the world who are working on, you know, various approaches. You know, which approach, according to you, you think holds the most promise? Well, I'm biased towards my approach, <laughs> yeah. but what, 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 uh, like we are still at the early stages of, of getting where we need to go in order to show that the immune system holds great promise and removal of senescent cells. But in terms of therapy, um, synolytic therapy is, is pretty close to where I think uh, very excited about how far that has come along. Um, so for the treatment of diseases of aging, which are caused by buildup of senescent cells, I think that therapy holds great promise right now. If the, the, the time it will take for something like that to come to market is actually quite short compared to like the kind of stuff that we're doing. But I think ultimately what we are doing is possibly going to be more, more meaningful and more uh, with much more application for most people. When you say the senolytic treatment mm -hmm. is going to be the most promising at this point in time, would you talk a little bit more about like the, the, the tests that you've done? You know, is it being just done on animals or humans? So animal testing has been done quite for quite, a while now and across the world and, and shown great, great promise. Um, there was one clinical trial uh, which was done in patients uh, with arthritis and uh, the drug was given locally. It didn't show um, uh, a, a positive outcome for patients like in addition to placebo, but um, there are more trials more, with more, more, uh, uh, more synolytic drugs which are showing even better promise. So those trials are being um, being prepared for, they're going to be conducted. And those drugs have a much stronger uh, effect on removal of senescent cells. And most of these drugs are essentially targeting the same signaling pathway, which is BCL family proteins. Um, and like, like I was trying to like convince you that uh, we think those are better drugs, more modified uh, drugs. They are next generation synolytic drugs. They're quite effective. Uh, and, and they've shown really good results in a uh, lot of invertebrate models and, and animal models. What are the cons of, of senolytic treatment? Because in the senescent cells, it, it, is, it plays an important role for cancer, right? Actually, the role of senescent cells in cancer is, uh, is tricky. So on one hand, one could argue that actually senescent cells prevent cancer or cell to become cancer or cancers. But it is also shown that um, in advanced um, cancers, Accumulation of senescent cells within tumor has been shown, and they actually contribute to tumor uh, metastasis far greater because of the ability to modify the matrix and because of the ability to cause inflammatory uh, or release inflammatory proteins. They actually make it far worse. So in that, in those cases, you want to remove uh, uh, senescent cells. Now, the the biggest like con, um, uh, in my opinion, of senescent cells, which is uh, mostly theoretical and hasn't necessarily been investigated, is that we don't know how these drugs could target um, um, immune cells like, like um, macrophages, which are known to express some of these similar proteins transiently um, as, uh, as senescent cells do, uh, and whether we, can, whether we would have a detrimental effects on those and what would, what would that cause in the short term and the long term, we don't know that. And again, we will also have to do more toxicity studies to see long-term effect of those drugs. Because if you're talking about treatment of disease, uh, this is a great, great uh, uh, place to be in. But if you're talking about giving this drug to general public for delaying aging, 
then we have to do more uh, you know trials we have to have a better understanding of the long term consequences because then you're talking about giving this drug as a preventive uh, treatment you know rather than uh, rather than treating a disease there you want to know um, these long term consequences that i that i was talking about when do you think this is going to be practical you know when do you think we will reach the escape velocity that you know you you talk about or when do you think that there could be drugs which are uh, available over the counter which could start showing you know i mean that that this these drugs are actually helping in maybe either stopping or reversing uh, age but when do you see that as a possibility i know it's it's a little far out and i'm sure there's so many things yeah. in mind because biology is so complicated but you know i'm sure you must be looking at like you might be having some kind of a uh, you know something on in your head that you know so, so i always break this into two problems one is can we treat people with age related diseases and that is available uh, to us is going to be available to us like very very soon um the the idea of giving treatment for like aging as such or delaying aging um i don't think we will have a solution which will be one solution that will fit everybody i think it will depend on various things um and what hasn't necessarily been done but we've started doing in our group um not when in our organization is that we think uh, we might have to start considering um combination of various things meaning like not just one intervention but multiple interventions and see whether there is an additive effect of it whether that would be more uh, beneficial uh, to to the patients so we're trying to combine say stem cell replacement with synolytic treatment um see if we if any of those treatments by by its own is giving a benefit but if we combine them do we get an added uh, benefit and then a combination of one more thing to it meaning like dietary intervention would would that add on to the effect with whether we adding exercise would would enhance this this even more whether adding like um uh like you know something that would enhance the immune system uh, eventually whether that would have added effect so i think what 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 now field is trying to do for the benefit of people is to see if combining those those treatments would work because each of those individually seems to have a very good effect on um on on treatment of aging um and in my opinion if if so we have all the puzzle pieces together now we're putting them together and see which would be the most beneficial um and i could i could imagine in 5 to 10 years from now we would have things which would be more applicable and would have like a clear benefit for uh, for people and we know that they're not going to be that harmful so in, in my opinion i think all the technologies are there we just are going to have um to test them in like in next 5 to 10 years we should have uh, some pill for you to take to take there are so many you know top institutes scientists working around the world but they're all working in silos so so you rightfully mentioned that you know if if there is Uh, if, if everybody can join hand maybe you know that could be something it, it could accelerate the treatment because that's the same thing which i see in, in in technology you know because there's so many cool things happening you know in ai ar vr mr but i guess everybody is siloed doing their own thing you know when the pandemic happened the only reason we got, got a, a vaccine was because the entire world joined hand and worked together so maybe if, if something like that can happen maybe it, it could ac- accelerate this uh, this process so there are like you know people like david sinclair and ray kozwa and many others who are actually having supplements at this point in time you know so would you for for the, the ones who are listening in would you kind of suggest something for people who are like really looking at human longevity i think if 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 i were to give one advice um that i give to my father uh, is regular exercise uh that itself has the biggest like advantage uh it it so there there is there are studies that are showing that people who are doing like 30 40 minutes of exercise every day actually are 10 years younger than people uh, i mean their 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 biological age is 10 years younger than people of the same age who don't do those kinds of things so that is one thing that i would definitely like suggest to people um but other than that like uh, like eating in moderation healthy eating uh, exercise uh, staying happy you know Uh, they they've shown in, even during the pandemic uh, you mentioned people who were able to have like regular contacts with family members friends and family 
uh, whether on Zoom or other ways, they tend to have a have a pos- more positive outlook towards life. Tend to stay healthier and happier and uh, and live longer. Right. So yeah. Supplements, I would probably stay away from. You know, uh, my listeners had a few questions. So, I mean, there is uh, Shivam Latkar, who is a student, a NEET asp- uh, aspirant, and he's interested in biotech. So his question is, can we make the human body super immune someday? The biggest advantage that we have um, with our immune system is the adaptability. Uh, so, but like, I think we can definitely add on to that advantage by the kind of stuff that we're talking about. You know, if if we if we like, there is work going on on um, senescence vaccine development. Like, if oh, if we know what part of the cell becomes, or or, or can we use to identify senescence cell? Can we then train our immune system to just remove senescence? Cell? So there's some stuff going on already in that direction, uh, very early stages, but but it's going on. Um, yeah. So in short, yes, I, I, that's what we're aiming for. Lovely. Yeah. How cool would that be? You know? I've got another question from Ishan Datta, again, one of a listener. He's asked cellular programming and damage repair are two schools of anti-aging approaches. And apparently these two schools don't seem to cross each other's path much. Uh, Dr. Aubrey had previously commented that Sense will be working on combination therapies with newly raised funds. This sense mm-hmm. open to combining therapies from opposite schools, for example, Yamanaka cellular programming of skin cells in combination with, say, telomere uh, lengthening. So reprogramming does improve telomere lengthening, the second part of the question. So so the advantage of partial reprogramming, at least theory, in theory, would be to that will allow the telomeres to repair because uh, the enzymes that are responsible for repair of telomere, they're not expressed in adult differentiated cells. So that's that would be... That now the, the the first part is I think I kind of alluded to earlier that that we are interested in and Aubrey had mentioned that they were interested in finding ways to combining uh, various approaches which which seem to have the the greatest impact um, on on improving longevity on their own but now combining them and see if we see an added effect and we will be doing more of that kind of work uh, in the in, in the in the future precisely because of what the audience mentioned uh, that could have a really really profound effect on on aging there are these animals who are doing some really really cool things you know like the the, the bowhead whale then the the mole rats the immortal jellyfish and, and things like that mm-hmm. do you think eventually we would be able to kind of like understand the biology and what like an I- I- immortal that je- jellyfish that tourist process donny is doing and maybe kind of like replicate into a human would that be like a possible roadmap maybe in the future and the way i look at this is that if we figure out how to solve the problem of aging, meaning that people could live healthier longer, um, the way I look at this, I think society will benefit broadly from this because imagine all the wisdom that people accumulate with as they grow old. And if their bodies fail, they're not going to be able to act on that. Like imagine if, if these people could function longer with all the wisdom they have accumulated, I think a lot of our problems would, would be like, like solved. Now, part of that solution would be coming from understanding some of these you know, animal models you're talking about. And part of it, some of it will come from, from you know, our own body. Like for instance, it's only very recently we started like focusing on the immune system and how important it is in regulating aging and, and, and removal of senescent cells and how that declines quite a bit with age. The other thing, for instance, we don't really fully understand well, we kind of understand the mechanics of it, but we're trying to reverse is is to understand why don't we make more T cells like the thymus, uh, the main organ which is responsible for the uh, the adaptive immune system and and making more naive T cells. Uh, we lose that very early in our life, like uh, you know. So there are groups that are trying to find ways to improve or regenerate thymus, you know, or, or replace it with, with a, with a modified version of thymus, which can do function like similarly. Um, and, and a lot of those things, I think are still at very early stages. And once we get the, once we get these systems to work, I think we, we're going to get there. Um, it's such an interesting space because I mean, it's, it's not just biology. I mean, it's, you know, that you know, we, we are kind of uh, maybe, 
splitting into a different species it might sound a little weird but you know there there are people who are working on artificial general intelligence you know there there is people who are working on brain uploading you know so there are there there are so there is there's alternate ways of maybe extending your your lifespan digitally also so so we we are yeah, we are living living in you know times which is at, at at one you know when when you look at it it's it's very beautiful you you know that you can go beyond and transcend the other side it's very scary also because we don't really know what happens what happens if humans actually become immortal are we ready for that you know though though i think if we solve aging it would be such a cool thing because i think that's that's such a big problem you know i mean it, the these elders dying you know could be there with us you know giving us more knowledge and it, it will be such a wonderful world like 10 But, years from now you know what do you think the world would look and uh, what would uh, where do you see yourself uh, in, in 2031 and your contribution to human longevity in 10 years from now i can safely predict that we would have um drugs that that we know that can be taken by patients who have a tendency for certain diseases which are exacerbated by aging and those drugs will be given to these people and they would be able to live lot longer healthier we would have understood and us or others would have found like some more interventions which are the immune system based i think those will become available to people and 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 we will have a far better understanding of how combining these therapies would be beneficial um there is also great work done right now of organ replacement like using like pig pig heart or pig kidney as a replacement for humans um so we would be able to do that i think in the 10 years i think we will be in much better place in terms of how we understand aging and how we can treat it and how we can extend human longevity uh, beyond the years look at what we've been able to do um, in last 10 15 years 20 years uh, the 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 vaccines and how uh, they have improved you know the quality of life and the longevity longevity of it um, a 50 year old man today you know is 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 much more healthier much more productive than he was like a few decades ago so if we if we keep going that route like if we follow that like trajectory i think we could easily extend our lifespan within my lifespan to maybe 10 20 maybe 30 years uh, more than what what we're doing now so and then sky's the limit you know science we really never stop dreaming as scientists you mentioned about organ regeneration and you know, there are people who are working on 3d printing of yeah. human or, or organs organ regeneration and so so exciting things happening so i i hope that you know the next 10 years uh, creates a world which is of healthy people a, a world which is disease free so on that note really appreciate you taking time and being part of the podcast and to my listeners if you like what you see in here then please press the subscribe button until next time see you guys bye bye thank you thank you so much really appreciate you talking to us thank you